It seemed like forever ago, I was moving on to this brand new property, and now, I am forced to move once again. This time, I was giving up what felt like everything. A lot of my animals, my land, my home, all that I had worked for. Oasis Valley was falling apart before my very own eyes, and there was nothing I could do about it. The family who sold this place left it in horrible shape. I had to quite literally build it from the ground up. Then, the unthinkable happened. The barn began falling apart. Whether it was from wear or tear, or just a sign from the universe, I was forced to move. Not only this, but my move would mean a lot of my horses were going to have to be sold to new homes to prevent a stressful trip for them. I said goodbye to Malibu and Blue who went to their new home together as a pair, and also Sunflower who went to another farm to help with lessons. All of my rescue horses as well that were in the pasture were rehomed as well to Riley's barn. It was so hard to see them go, but I knew it was best for them as this trip would be a long one. Fletcher, the horse I saved last year, went to a new home to live out the rest of his days grazing and laying in the sun. There was no way this barn would make another move in its condition, and the house was already permanent, so I had no choice but to move across the land closer to a villager town named Hillcrest. Do you ever have that feeling of, I want to move so far away from here, like a whole new atmosphere? I did just that, whole biomes away. Thankfully, supplies were bountiful here. Hillcrest had shipping ports, and you could order basically anything from over the sea. Plus, villagers traded all types of rare and unique items or animals in the town. The town also had a market, so I'll be able to sell my own animals this upcoming fall if my newer animals do have babies. And I had a lot of space for new land. The only catch? It came with a dog, and a very grumpy cat, who happened to be hairless. We don't blame him for that though, he was born that way. Oh, and a very sweet sheep named Rosemary. Loading my horses didn't take long, but the drive was far. The trees changed, and the air felt clearer the further we got from the busy area I was before. Best of all, there was plenty of space to adventure in my new home. The first load of horses were unloaded and brought into the barn. The second load wasn't far behind with a friend to help. Into the barn went Pumpkin and Firefly. The rest of the horses would be pasture boarded, which wasn't a problem at all due to the weather being amazing here for most of the year. I guess closer to winter, we'd have to prepare the best option for them. I don't think they mind though. The pastures were beautiful with plenty of shade and area for them to rest. The second load of horses arrived hours later, and we were able to escort them into their pastures where they made themselves at home quickly. The barn itself was empty, too empty. I set up equipment quickly and began to unpack a lot of my items. Sadly, I have no farmhouse on this new property. Until I can afford one, I'll just be staying in the loft upstairs. It's not ideal, but it's what will have to happen for now. Plus, I have a very dirty farm dog and hairless cat that has done nothing but growl at me to keep me warm.
There was no info left on the dog or the cat, so I will need help naming these guys. But Rosemary introduced herself to me by begging me for treats and following me around. The old owners of the property, who didn't live far, were nice enough to leave feed in the pen for Rosemary, though she could use a good brush down, maybe a shallow shear to get rid of any matting. Maybell and Ginger, my cat and dog from the barn, were settling in well and they thankfully got along with the other dog and cat. We also moved Bartholomew and Bartholo Baby, plus Newton, who cannot physically escape any longer, but I am sure he will find a way like he always does. So now that we have moved the animals over, care to join me for a tour? I will try to stay on track. Promise. First, the barn. The barn isn't the biggest, but it has enough room to house certain horses and hold equipment and feed for the animals. It's a dreamy barn to look at, and I love the very helpful stall doors on the back to allow easy access. Another neat feature are the faucets that allow for easy fill-up of the buckets, so it all it takes is a quick turn on the water in the morning and the horses will have fresh water. It has a loft upstairs which I still have to decorate with items from home, and plenty of space to decorate more. If you exit the barn, you will see a flourishing garden, which is somewhat disorganized with a mixture of weeds, but I have never been one to shy away from gardening, so it'll take time to weed out certain plants. Then, straight ahead, is a beautiful waterfall. This is what the old owners called the Glen, as it's surrounded by a valley. Oasis Valley was now officially a valley. A large mountain covering the backside of it opened up into a beautiful landscape, awaiting an adventure. Then the pastures. There are four of them, and they have plenty of areas for the horses to run around and graze. There are more of them on the other side of the mountain, but they are broken down and will need to be fixed. Those will be used for rotating pastures during the spring so the grass can grow. There are two smaller pens on the outskirts of the barn, and these are blank. I am hoping to go and purchase some cows and pigs from the village, so I'm excited for that. Then, the arenas. We had one oval arena, which would be perfect for barrels or poles, and then a flat arena where I could set up some jumps. In between them was a lunging pen and a large tree. Past the property on the north side was a river that separated my land from the forest across. So I have another build to consider, a bridge. This would open up the possibility of forest rides and maybe desensitizing my horses to the open wilderness. See, this property is different from my previous in many ways, but one of the biggest is that my surroundings can be more dangerous. More predators, more risks, and more of the unknown. I guess that's what makes it fun in an odd way. You never know what you'll find beyond these trees. There are also a lot of talks in the village about unknown land around them. They didn't really know what to do about it, so they just have left it alone their entire lives. An entire village that have enclosed themselves in a small area, fearing an area that they have never explored, or the people who have tried to explore it have never returned from. There's also plenty to do around here, like fishing, even though I've never really been before. or looking at the different butterflies, or picking flowers to fill the empty flower pots in the windowsills. There is also plenty of wildlife lounging about, like this family of sea turtles that have seemed to find their way into the river. Knowing sea turtles and their inability to stay out of salt water for too long, they will venture back to the sea shortly. After a long day of moving in, the final touches were made to the new and improved Oasis Valley Ranch and Rescue. Now it is officially open for business, and I'm so excited to see what type of journeys lie ahead for us. I have so much more work to do on this place, so stay tuned for my next adventure. Until next time! I don't wanna waste it on anybody Take it with anybody Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. At the tone, please record your message. Hi, is this Oasis Valley Ranch? Sorry, I'm not sure if this is the correct number. I got it from a friend. I have a situation. This mayor I purchased is extremely lovely. She's also very lazy. I bought her for barrels, and you can probably see my dilemma from that alone. I've tried everything with her, and even hired a trainer. 
Still nothing. I'd be willing to give her up for a small price if you're interested. Call me back anytime.